What is going on guys? I am back. I am back to review Caligula. I apologize for missing the review on the last episode because I was very busy, but now I am officially back again. And I have to say, what I have returned to was very pleasing. And I mean, boy, this was by far my most favorite episode so far in the series. Because my goodness, this was, you know how in past episodes of reviews, I've been saying how people are complaining like, where's the action, where's the action? Well, here you are. Here's the freaking action, ladies and gentlemen. And I gotta say, I was impressed. I was like, is this not why you are here? Are you not entertained? Because I know I was entertained. We have action, we have character development, we have confirmation, we have all that stuff. Things I have been wondering about in the back of my head, but I didn't want to say to you guys, because I want to be like, I should have said, but nah. But anyways, this episode was amazing. I, I love it. I love the atmosphere. I love how all the characters got their chance to shine in the face of their inner demons and facing reality. Now, let's talk about the ringleaders, musicians. They're called people who are controlling you. And it turns out the main head leader, her name is Thorn. And she's the main person that's controlling Mew. And manipulating her thing that she's doing the right thing because with inside Mew's consciousness she believes that she's doing the right thing she believes she's spreading happiness and joy and to some extent she is she's doing it for the musicians she's doing it for people who do not wish to wake up to reality so she is doing a good job by that however there are those who do not agree with her concept which is understandable. And there's always a world where everything's not black and white, where there's always a gray area. And this is the gray area. I know Mew's motives are good, and who wouldn't want to live in the world where everything's A-OK? -okay. Between you and me, I would gladly jump into that anytime I want to. Just for a little while or so like that. But then and again, there's always that self that you always want to do of accomplishment. Is what's missing in this world that Mew has created. Sure, it didn't come by you by gender, but however, you don't appreciate it. Do you really appreciate what's given to you because they're given to you on a silver platter? You don't really take care of it much, really. That's how we see it in reality standards. So, when you do work and accomplish something within reality, you have a better appreciation of it. This is something you did on your own. You accomplished it on your own. And because of that, you feel proud about yourself. It helps you grow. Yes, reality is hard, but it helps you struggle through the life. It defines who you are as a person by actions and personality. So yes, reality is hard, but it helps you out in the long run. It's the reason why we exist in the first place. So going on to the next topic of Releasing your power. So far, only two of the good guys were able to release their power, and that was Shogo and the other girl who was having that beauty competition on the last episode. And I was learning, okay, Shogo was the first of the rogue rebellion to join, so of course he would use his powers. But however, the second person just showed up really, and it turns out she was also able to use her power. So I was wondering, how come these two were able to use their powers, but not the main characters or anybody else? What did it take? for them to use their powers. And this episode gladly gave us that on feedback. And that is, turns out, is what I've been talking about the whole entire time, is facing reality, facing your inner demons. Everybody who wishes to wake up has a reason why they were there in the first place. They were running away from something that traumatized them or something they didn't like about themselves or something that happened within the past, or probably something they're don't want to face in the future. I know even the musicians themselves have their reasons of being there too when it comes to their looks, their personality, or their wishes. Where it comes to also the Royal Rebellion, they also have their reasons of being there. But now they want to wake up, they realize that this isn't right. You can't run away from your problems. Because no matter how happy you are, somewhere deep inside your self-conscious, you will always remember that thing that is being haunting you. Or else you want to be there in the first place. You know? The reason why they're in this beautiful utopia is because everyone has a reason to run away from something, something they do not wish to face. So because of this, this utopia was created. Now it's time to wake up from the dream and to face reality. And because of that, 
all our main characters were able to summon their powers and fight against the musicians. And I have to say, they were doing all the fights, the music was going on, it was really good. I was enjoying it too. The animation wasn't so shabby after all. It was pretty good. So far, I know there are some parts, even Ginkgo was talking about the animation in his own review, well, that was impression of it, which was kind of sad, how he really underappreciated the show compared to what Mother Spaceman did, where Mother Spaceman was saying the show was too good for its own right, because it's based off a game adaption, but I say, why not? Giga and I were just only talking about one thing with that one bad time of animation when Risu and his friends were walking, and the animation was bad then, but come on, people, you can't judge a whole entire series based on one bad animation. But get off of that anyways. Back on to the show. Mew finally hit her breaking point. Mew turned into like a dark form of herself. It was very interesting to see that. She has been holding up all the negative emotions carried by everyone within that world. And because of that, it was starting to consume her. So she transformed into this like, you know, this beautiful, nice black suit. I don't know why. But when characters turn into bad guys, they always look so cool. So I guess when you see the character as a bad guy and become a good guy, you kind of wish, like, why can't you stay a bad guy? Because you look so cool in a nice outfit or your powers change and stuff like that. I don't know why. The writers and from come from anime, video games, anything, when a good guy turns bad, they always look so cool. I don't know why, I guess it makes people give them the, it justifies their excuse of being bad. Like, why did she turn bad? Well, you can see her in this badass outfit. Like, I'm intrigued. I was intrigued indeed. So we also got to hear a new kind of song, and I like the song. It was very dark and moody. And not only the song itself was dark and moody, but so did the atmosphere of the show as well change. Things went from a rising hope of the heroes to a new dark despair from Muse and emotions that she was keeping in within herself but because of this triggered another emotion set for our main character Ritsu. Now Ritsu has been the main character since the beginning and um, he's just been sitting there trying to decide what he wants to do with himself. Should he face reality or should he go back into the dream and just be completely ignorant? But even though he believed he wanted to face reality nothing happened. He could not trigger his power like everybody else did. So because of that, he was curious of why it wasn't happening for him until he saw Mew suffering. And even though he wasn't sure what he wanted to do, he was able to unlock his power and able to save Mew. Well, at least not for out of her, not for back to our senses at least, because Mew was still captured by Thorn in the end. So, something that Mew said, calling Risu a jerk. Why does it feel like Ritsu probably knows Mew? I have a feeling um, with um, Ritsu's memories that probably something to do with him knowing who Mew was in the past. And seeing from the opening, you know the last sequences within the anime opening where um, Mew was falling and Ritsu falls after her and then they collide these beautiful petals and stuff like that. Some tells me his reasoning is for Mew. He has some type of deep past with Mew, and I have a feeling that those two are going to be probably together by the end of this. I don't know. That's how I feel about this right now. I, I have not peeked at the game whatsoever. I promise I have not yet. I will not do anything with the game until this anime is over with, and then out of my comparison video of the video game and anime later on, once when the anime is done, once I get my hands on the video game. But then again, if it does hit PS4, I'm probably going to live stream it on the channel and have we all have some fun watching me play it and talk about it and stuff, you know, talk about it, compare it to the anime and stuff. But yes, this was one heck of an episode. Everyone was facing their demons. Everyone has a reason why they were there. Even the vlog girl, how apparently she wanted to be accepted and loved by other people, so she probably reason why she created the vlog. Me feel in her hate for fat people and. How she does her mom a very wrong way, learning to appreciate her mom more. The course of other characters, wanting to be faced, become strong, not being shy, um, accepting who you are, and also apparently Shogo has some really dark. Um, he said he was a murderer. I don't know. Uh, in anime, they do this. They take this by a stretch. A lot of there's times in those anime shows where the deep dark version calls himself a murderer because someone gets themselves killed and they blame themselves for it. So I don't believe Shogo is a murderer. I believe he just 
thinks he's at fault because of what happened. And I know Shogo is not at fault. I keep seeing the flashbacks of last episode. Apparently some girl fell off the building and he was trying to stop her. That doesn't make you a murderer or anything, man. You probably do like to murder her. But in the end, I can see why people feel guilty about that. Especially someone they care about. I don't know much about it, but I'd like to see more of it. We probably will later on, hopefully. You know, do a very well executed plot for it, too. So anyways, yeah, that was Kali Gula Episode 6. I would say it was the best episode yet. And I am looking forward to seeing what happens next. I have to say, this is doing a way better than Persona 5 right now. And Persona 5 is out of 5 from 24 episodes. Talk about not fair. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon to get more yours truly. I have been the Macron Anime, and I'm signing out. Have a good one, guys.